if we have an inconsistent estimator, it's sometimes helpful to think about whether our estimator is likely too large or likely too low. And one definition to specify the sign is the so-called asymptotic bias, or also sometimes called the inconsistency. Um, so it's defined as a difference of the probability limit of some estimator, so that's the value against it converges, minus the true coefficient. And if you have a consistent estimator, this asymptotic bias is always zero, because our estimator converges in probability to the uh, true beta k. So this means if you have an OLS estimator, then under weak assumption, we know that it converges against this coefficients of the best scenario predictor. So the asymptotic bias of an OLS estimator is basically the difference of this best scenario predictor minus the beta k, however we have defined it. So if beta k is the, shall be the best scenario predictor, we have a zero asymptotic bias. If it's some causal effect, we may have a positive or negative asymptotic bias. So the there's also the definition of a bias instead of an asymptotic bias, but I don't want to go into detail there. So typically for all of our examples, so if we have an asymptotic bias that's positive or negative, in almost all cases, a bias will have the same um, uh, sign than the asymptotic bias. Um, so I typically use both terms interchangeably here in this course. Okay, now there's a a formula for the asymptotic bias for a simple linear regression. So assume we estimate the simple linear regression. So simple means we have only one explanatory variable. Um, then one can show that the asymptotic bias of the OLS estimator for, for x, uh, so the beta 1 hat, satisfies the following formula. Um, the asymptotic bias is given by the correlation between x and the error term multiplied by the standard deviation of u and divided by the standard deviation of x. So the important thing is that the sign of the asymptotic bias of the old s estimator is the same as the correlation between our explanatory variable and our error term. So if the explanatory variable is positively correlated with the error term, then our OLS estimator overestimates the causal effect. It's too large. And if the correlation is negative, then our OLS estimator underestimates the causal effect. And only if our explanatory variable is uncorrelated with the error term, uh, we have a zero asymptotic bias. This means our OLS estimator consistently estimates this parameter beta 1. So the bias or the asymptotic Bias depends on the correlation of your explanatory variable with your error term. And there's another definition in econometrics that really builds upon this correlation. So consider a linear regression model, possibly with more than one explanatory variable. And we say then that a particular explanatory variable, xk, is exogenous if it is not correlated with the error term. The correlation, um, with the error term is zero. And an explanatory variable is endogenous if it is correlated with the error term. So either, either the correlation is positive or negative. And one can show that the kind the old S estimator as a complete vector of all beta hat zero until beta hat big K is consistent only if every explanatory variable x1 to xk is exogenous. And if one of this explanatory variable is endogenous, we say we have an endogeneity problem and that makes the OLS estimator inconsistent. Note that whether we have an endogeneity problem or not depends on what we mean, what the beta case shall mean, because also the meaning of the beta case influences the meaning of the u, because you can think the u is always given by y minus beta 0 minus beta 1 and so on. So the definition of u depends on our definition of the beta case. And for example, one can show the betas are always the predictions of the best linear coefficient, then uh, this will imply 
that the error term is always uncorrelated with all the x case. So if the betas are the coefficients of a best linear coefficient, basically it will always be the case that all our explanatory variables are exogenous. So let's illustrate this with a simulation example. It's essentially the same simulation we had before, only that I, instead of calling the variables now alpha, I call them beta. So y shall be given by beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus u. And I simulate this with 10,000 observations. Beta 1 and beta 2 are both 1. u shall be just a standard normally distributed error term. x2 shall also uh, be drawn from a standard normal distribution. x1 shall depend on x2. So it's positively affected by x2 plus some other factors that are standardly normal, standard normally distributed. Y is just given by this formula here. Now what I do now, I estimate the short regression where I omit x2. So I estimate just this regression, I regress y on x1. So the error term in the short regression contains all the factors that I have not explicitly written down. So here, because I know that's a two data generating process, I know the epsilon consists of the stuff I have omitted. So that's beta 2 x2 plus u. So how is now the correlation um, between x1 and epsilon? It is positive because we know x2, which is part of the error term here, positively affects x1 and also this beta 2 is a positive coefficient, so it's 1. So x1 and epsilon are positively correlated. So this means in the short regression, x1 is endogenous. And if we look at the bias formula, see that the bias of our old S estimate and such a simple regression has the same sign than the correlation between uh, our explanatory variable and the error term. And that's the error term in the short regression. Here you must now place an epsilon instead of, uh, of the u. So we have a positive correlation between x1 and the error term. In this short regression, our simulation, and this we can also verify for a simulated data set. So we find here a positive correlation, if I compute it, between x1 and epsilon. So we have a positive bias if we estimate the short regression. And that's what we find here. The coefficient of one of x1, so the beta 1 hat in the short regression is 1.49. So it's um, uh, larger than the true beta 1, which is here the true causal effect of 1.